Hi again, I'm Carson from Guys With Games, and today we're going to learn how to play Jeopardy in the classroom. Jeopardy, if you're not familiar with it, is an American game show where there are categories of questions, and then within each category there are multiple questions that increase not only in value, but also in difficulty. So the question for at level one would be worth one point, but it would be easier than the level five question for five points. That's how it works. If you are familiar with this game show, you will know that this, on TV anyway, is very highbrow form of entertainment, meaning the questions are very difficult and the contestants are very intelligent. It might make you think that Jeopardy can only be played in classes of very advanced students, but I'll tell you that that is actually not true. I play Jeopardy at basically every level that I teach, even the very young beginner students. We just need to tailor not only the categories but also the questions themselves to the student's individual ability. And so it does take some preparation but it's really not so bad. You might think it would take a long time to write this many questions but don't worry. Let's go through what each kind of category here is. There are more that you could use, but these are enough examples to get you started. Okay, we'll start with gestures. Gestures are, is a type of questions that I would only ask to very young learners. When I'm teaching young learners independently of this game, when I'm just teaching a class, we use gestures to um, help the students remember um, and also introduce new concepts without explaining in their native language. So, maybe the first set of gestures that I teach would be something like tall, short, big, and little. Okay? So, a question might be in this set would be something like, what is this gesture? Something that they've seen before. They're not learning a new one. I'm just asking them, do you remember what is this gesture? And if they say tall, they get one point for their team. And I'll erase the one. So let's get into gameplay. I usually divide the class into two teams. So we have this side and that side. And I'll choose two people, one from here and one from here. And they'll play paper, scissors, stone. The winner will choose what kind of category he or she wants. So if we say gesture, okay, what is this? And if that student says tall, they get a point. If that student says something that's not tall, I would ask their counterpart, do you know what it is? And if they were answered correctly, they get a point. If they answer wrong, nobody gets a point for that one. Regardless of who gets the points for the first question, that student's turn is finished, and now it's your turn to choose a question. So I want to make sure that everybody has a chance to choose the type of question that they feel they can succeed at. So gestures, finished. Spelling, as you might guess, is just what it sounds like. If you choose spelling, I'll ask you how to spell a word. So this will, even number five, will not be a word they've never heard before. It will be something, there, these will be five words that are in their most recent unit of learning. Or maybe if the students have a spelling list that they need to come and spell to you, the teacher, then I will choose an easy one at level one and work my way to the, maybe the most difficult one, or the one that I think gives students the most trouble, spelling. Vocabulary works like this. I will give an English definition and the first letter of the word that I'm thinking of, the target word, and they tell me the answer. Okay, synonym, if you don't know what a synonym is, a synonym is when two words mean nearly the same thing. But maybe the young students wouldn't know this. I could say this in an advanced class and my kids would know. They may need a reminder, but they would know what it is. If it was a young student's class, I might just draw an equals sign. Then they are looking for a word that means the same thing as the, the word I provide. So if I say something disgusting, they would say, oh, I know, is yucky. Yucky, good, okay, one point, good job. QA and AQ, they work as opposites. Every week, at almost every level, I teach a question of the week and a full sentence answer to that question. So something like, what can you see at a train station? I can see a vending machine. I can see a turnstile. I can see a train conductor. 
at a train station. I will ask them the question, they need to tell me the answer and use a grammatically correct sentence to do so. This would be the opposite. So I would tell them the answer to a question and they need to ask that question. So maybe I am superstitious about the number 13. They need to say, oh, I know, uh, what are you superstitious about? An antonym is the same, but different, right? Okay, so it is the opposite of whatever my prompt word is what I'm looking for, right? It's the opposite of a synonym. I might draw this equal, it doesn't equal that. So bad, good, uh, fat, thin, something like this, okay? And the last one, I always will include this at almost any level. These are questions about me, something that I've shared with them or something that they can see. Uh, for example, let's see here. Maybe you've seen me in other videos before. You might have better chance than my students to know the answer to this. I have a keychain that I always wear on the outside of my pants. And on that keychain, there is a little animal. It's a little figurine that I bought at the zoo. What animal is it? And they would guess, some of my students know this because they think it's cute, but if you knew, it was a penguin. So I have a penguin on my keys. 1,000 points to you if you got that right. Anyway, that's how I would play my own round. This is always the most popular one that goes right away. And it's just to kind of inspire the kids. Like, this is a fun thing. Although you need to do a lot of work, we're having fun doing it. So again, I let the students choose what kind they want, but I do not let them choose out of the number order. So for example, if they say vocabulary, I'll just straightly ask them whatever the highest one is here, it's number one. So, okay, the easiest. I, uh, it is a place you can go to buy a meal and it starts with the letter R, restaurant, good. Then the next time they choose, I would ask them the second question. They can't say vocabulary for five, please. Not in my game, it will waste too much time. So, how about setting this up? Well, it's as easy as you want it to be. Basically, I take a piece of paper, I go through their books, and I want to say, all right, spelling, uh, maybe the vocabulary question, and Carson, in this set. Well, I just find five words, and I choose the most difficult word to be five. I do the same thing with vocabulary or synonyms. Uh, the QA, I ask them to say their QA or answer QA often so I know which ones are easy for them to do, which ones are difficult. Antonym, the same like synonym. And then for me, I just choose things. These would be like, you see me very often, what color are my eyes? And so, you know, now they suddenly have to, oh wait, I never really noticed. Are they green? No, they're not green. My eyes are blue. But down here would be something maybe more difficult, something that I've referenced once or twice in the past that they could know, but maybe they forgot, like what's my Chinese name? If they knew what my Chinese name was, great, but I don't think they will remember. So if they get it, five points, obviously. Anyway, when do I use Jeopardy? I use Jeopardy at the end of a significant chunk, so maybe at the end of uh, two units, of learning, then we have this kind of comprehensive review of the material inside, or before a big test, if there are specific things that I feel the students are having difficulty with, I will make that be a category and include questions that give them practice at this particular skill. Anyway, uh, Jeopardy, again, is a game show. I'm gonna do a series of how I've turned multiple game shows into ESL games. So this is the first one in that series, and thanks for watching. I hope it works out well for you. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. And once again, thanks to our patrons. The link to our Patreon page is in the description.